Okay, everyone. Welcome to our molecular biology class. Today, we will be talking about cellular metabolism. A white-tailed deer is foraging for acorns, as seen in the picture. All cells must obtain energy, synthesize their own internal structure, control much of their own activity, and guard their boundaries. Cellular metabolism refers to the collective chemical process that occur within living cells to accomplish these activities. Although the innermost number of reactions in their aggregate are extremely complex, the central metabolic routes through which matter and energy are channeled appear to be conserved by the majority of living organisms. Animals grow and maintain themselves by borrowing free energy from the environment. When a deer feasts on the acorns and beech nuts of summer, it transfers potential energy, stored as chemical bond energy in the nuts' tissues, to its own body. Then, in step-by-step -step sequences called biochemical pathways, this energy is gradually released to fuel the deer's many activities. In effect, the deer decreases its own internal entropy by increasing the entropy of its food. The orderly structure of the deer is not permanent, however, but will be dissipated when it dies. The ultimate source of this energy for the deer and for almost all life on Earth is the sun. Sunlight is captured by green plants, which fortunately accumulate enough chemical band energy to sustain both themselves and animals that feed on them. Energy can exist in either of two states, kinetic or potential. Energy can be transformed from one state to another. Especially important for a living organism is chemical energy, a form of potential energy stored in the chemical bonds of molecules. Chemical energy can be tapped when bonds are rearranged to release kinetic energy. Much of the work done by living organisms involves conversion of potential energy to kinetic energy. To describe the energy changes of chemical reactions, biochemists use the concept of free energy. Free energy is simply the energy in a system available for doing work. In a molecule, free energy equals the energy present in chemical bonds minus the energy that cannot be used. The majority of reactions in cells release free energy and are called exergonic. Such reactions are spontaneous and always proceed downhill since free energy is lost from the system. However, many important reactions in cells require the addition of free energy and are said to be endergonic. Such reactions have to be pushed uphill because the products store more energy than the reactants. Catalysts are chemical substances that accelerate reaction rates without affecting the products of the reaction and without being altered or destroyed by the reaction. A catalyst cannot make an energetically impossible reaction happen. It simply accelerates a reaction that would proceed at a very slow rate otherwise. Enzymes are catalysts of the living world. The special catalytic talent of an enzyme is its power to reduce the amount of activation energy requiring for a reaction. In effect, an enzyme steers the reaction through one or more intermediate steps, each of which requires much less activation energy than that required for a single step reaction. Note that enzymes do not supply the activation energy. Instead, they lower the activation energy barrier, making a reaction more likely to proceed. Enzymes affect only the reaction rate. They do not in any way alter the free energy change of a reaction nor do they change the proportions of reactants and products in a reaction. The figure shows energy changes during enzyme catalysis of a substrate. The overall reaction proceeds with a net release of energy. In the absence of an enzyme, substrate is stable because of the large amount of activation energy needed to disrupt strong chemical bonds. The enzyme reduces the energy barrier by forming a chemical intermediate with a much lower internal energy state. So how does an enzyme work? The ribbon model 
as in A, and the space filling model as in B, show that an enzyme lysozyme bears a pocket containing the active site. When a chain of sugar, as in substrate, enters the pocket, like in this figure, the protein enzyme changes shape slightly so that the pocket enfolds the substrate and conforms to its shape. This positions the active site, amino acid in the protein, next to a bond between adjacent sugars in the chain, causing the sugar chain to break. One of the most distinctive attributes of enzyme is their high specificity. Specificity is a consequence of the exact molecular fit required between enzyme and substrate. Furthermore, an enzyme catalyzes only one reaction. Unlike reactions performed in an organic chemist laboratory, no side reactions or byproducts result. Specificity of both substrate and reaction is obviously essential to prevent a cell from being swamped with useless byproducts. High specificity of trypsin, as shown in this figure, splits only peptide bonds adjacent to lysine or arginine. We have seen that inorganic reactions are those that do not proceed spontaneously because certain products require an input of free energy. However, an intergonic reaction may be driven by coupling the energy-requiring reaction with an energy-yielding reaction. ADB is one of the most common intermediates in coupled reactions, and because it can drive such energetically unfavorable reactions, it is of central importance in metabolic processes. An ATP molecule consists of adenosine, the purine adenine, and the 5-carbon sugar ribose and a triphosphate group, just like in figure A. Most free energy in ATP resides in the triphosphate group, especially in two phosphoanhydride bonds between the three phosphate groups called high-energy bonds. Usually, only the most exposed high-energy bond is hydrolyzed, to release free energy when ATP is converted to adenosine diphosphate and inorganic phosphate, where P represents phosphate and I represents inorganic. So that means inorganic phosphate. The high energy groups in ATP are often designated by the tilde symbol just like in figure P. A high energy phosphate bond is shown as tilde P. And a low energy bond such as the bond linking the triphosphate group to adenosine as product P. Thus ATP may be symbolized as A product phosphate tilde phosphate tilde phosphate and ADP as A product phosphate tilde phosphate. The figure shows a coupled reaction. It shows the endergonic conversion of substrate A to product A will not occur spontaneously but requires an input of energy from another reaction involving a large release of energy. ATP is the intermediate through which the energy is shuttled. The way in which ATP can drive a coupled reaction is shown in this figure. A coupled reaction is really a system involving two reactions linked by an energy shuttle. The conversion of substrate A to product A is endergonic. It is because the product contains more free energy than the substrate. Therefore, energy must be supplied by coupling the reaction to an exergonic one. 
the conversion of substrate B to product B. So the substrate B in this reaction is commonly called a fuel. So for example, glucose or a lipid. Bond energy released in reaction B is transferred to ADP, which in turn is converted to ATP. So ATP now contributes its phosphate bound energy to reaction A. And ADP and inorganic phosphate are produced again. The high energy bonds of ATP are actually rather weak, unstable bonds. Because they are unstable, the energy of ATP is readily released when ATP is hydrolyzed in cellular reactions. Note that ATP is an energy coupling agent and not a fuel. It is not a storehouse of energy set aside for some future need. Rather, it is produced by one set of reactions and is almost immediately consumed by another set. ATP is formed as it is needed, primarily by oxidative processes in mitochondria. Oxygen is not consumed unless ADP and phosphate molecules are available, and these do not become available until ADP is hydrolyzed by some energy-consuming process. Metabolism is therefore mostly self-regulating. So that's the end for the cellular metabolism. I will see you in the next lecture video. Thank you and stay safe everyone. Goodbye.